Hello, and welcome to the session Finding Their Way, Student Perception in Navigating Online Course Interfaces. And our presenters for this session are Cassie Hoyson, uh, Lynn Jonathan, Jen Carey Tomlinson, and Vending Mahan. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Um, we thought we'd like to start with just showing you our elevator pitch, because that's going to give you a good idea of uh, what we're going to be talking about today. Oh, play this game. Okay, let's see. Syllabus, syllabus. Dropbox, Dropbox, where's the drop? Many different units at Penn State produce online courses, each with their own interface designs. Online students can face a variety of course layouts. How do our students perceive these divergent course interfaces? Is there an impact on student learning? Several learning design units conducted a research study to find out. Join us at our session as we reveal our findings. Thanks. We're glad you liked that. We thought that was cute. <laughs> so if you came here um, expecting to the Price is Right, I'm sorry, this is not going to be a game show. Um, that, was the, that was the game part. But we are going to talk about the research study that we did. and. Um, we want to introduce ourselves again and just let you know where we're from. Um, I'm Kathy Holsing. I'm the Director of Learning Design for the College of the Liberal Arts. I'm Jane Carey Thomas and I'm from Outreach Analytics and Reporting. I'm Lynn Johnson. I'm a Manager of Instructional Design with World Campus Learning Design. And I'm Lindy Mahan. I'm a Senior Instructional Designer with College of Health and Human Development. And we had a, s several other team members that were on our group with us. Those included Wayne Anderson from the Center of Learning Innovations at Barron, uh, Mike Brooks, who's the Assistant Manager of Accessibility and Usability for the World Campus Learning Design, and Gary Chin, who's the Director of the eLearning Institute in the College of Arts and Architecture. So we wanted to just make sure you all knew who was involved in this, because it really was a cross-university collaborative effort. We had you know, people from all over the university working on this. And we thought that was really important to highlight that part. So um, as we said in our video, there's a number of different course interfaces that are used by the different learning design units here at Penn State. Um, many of us are using a content management system that, we're, that we use to house our course content outside of ANGEL. So this is an example of some of the different designs from some of the learning design shops here at Penn State. Uh, we do all use ANGEL as the course management system at, at the present time, and so we link out of ANGEL and back into ANGEL. But you can see that just the way that ANGEL is being used is, is slightly different from each unit as well. So we had heard over the course of the last probably couple of years some anecdotal evidence that some students were having difficulty in you know, navigating these different interfaces. But when we tried to determine whether or not there was really any hard data to back up you know, these kind of things that we were hearing, there really wasn't any real data around the issue. So the um, Penn State Online Coordinating Council asked a subcommittee to conduct a survey to try and gather some data. And this is the kind of things that we were looking for. Um, first, to have some concrete information about whether or not this really, this perceived issue was really an issue for students. Um, to collect information on what their perceptions were and what kind of an impact that was having on their learning experience. And then to break down the responses by characteristics, like were the younger students having more or less trouble than older students? What, <coughs> did it matter what campus the students were studying at and how many courses they were taking at the same time? And then also, if there were any other factors that we could uh, get to that were impeding the learning experience, we wanted to try and, and figure out those things as well. So we had some open response questions that were trying to get to those issues. 
So what we did was we conducted a survey. Um, my group was approached to conduct this survey. Um, there were, we looked at students who took at least two online courses um, and could be from any Penn State campus or college in summer of 2014. Um, and many campuses and colleges actually offer a lot more online courses in the summer semester compared to others. Um, it, we excluded things like the e-learning cooperative and the Blackboard pilot courses. Those would of course perhaps look and feel slightly different. Um, and undergraduates um, only. So we looked at folks who took only courses below the 400 level to try to be true undergraduates. Um, and the survey went out the fourth week of fall, but again, looking back at the summer courses that they took, trying to get them to talk about those courses, and kept it open for two weeks with a reminder. We had 18 questions, seven were multiple choice, 10 were on a Likert scale, and one was completely open-ended, got a lot of comments back on that. Um, we, our methodology, uh, just a little bit more on, the, on what we got back, was we sent out four, uh, just over 4,000 surveys. Um, we, uh, we got a response rate of about 9%. We had 387 returned. Um, students could also choose to skip any question they wanted to, so we, you know, they didn't feel any pressure to answer every single question. Um, and as I said, we got about 120 comments to that open-ended question, which were quite useful. Okay, in terms of what the survey looked like, we started with a broad overview of questions that address the look and structure of the online courses, and then we drilled down to specific questions about what impacted their learning experience. So we looked at different features in terms of organization, navigation, location of course components. Um, we also did demographics, um, what campus are you from, your age range, how many courses are you taking, um, and then we, um, as, as uh, Jane mentioned, we, we finished with an open-ended question to ask them to, you know, address any issues that they felt were important. Uh, we're focusing this presentation only on those features that negatively impacted the learning experience just because we've received so much information. So starting with the broad questions, um, we asked them, all my Penn State online courses have a similar look and structure. And as you can see here, 52% actually agreed or strongly agreed with that statement. On this next chart, um, the, the, what we said is every time I start a new Penn State online course, I am able to find the basic components such as the syllabus, lessons, and assignments. And here, 88% either agreed or strongly agreed with this. This next, next graph. Um, asked them about what t how much time they spent at the start of the course locating these basic components. And again, 59% uh, indicated that it took them less than 15 minutes to find the basic components. Another 26% said it took them 30 minutes or less. So moving on to what really negatively affected their learning experience, um, when we looked at this, over half indicated that the location of the due dates negatively impacted their learning experience, and 46% said the location of assignment instructions impacted their learning experiences. And we have a couple of quotes down here, um, and, and basically what it is saying is that they find that the, the due dates are scattered sometimes. Sometimes it says a due date in the syllabus, another size it'll say something different in an angel folder. Um, we've got some recommendations that a, a centralized calendar would be helpful, um, someplace where all their courses used the same thing so that they could find the due dates. When we looked at it by campus, we found that regardless of, camp, of the campus location, um, the location of the due dates and the assignment instructions negatively impacted their learning experience. When we looked at the number of courses, again, regardless of the number of courses, the location of the due dates and the assignments instructions negatively impacted their learning experience. But you can see once it gets up to four or more courses, the percentage increases. Um, I have a quote there, and, and obviously they're saying, you know, I, I have four or more courses. If every, every course you have, have has a different location for these things, obviously you're scrambling. Um, so I, we think that's very important to know. And also that we only looked at students who were taking two or more courses, so I wanted to point that out as well. Next, we looked at age range. Again, regardless of age range, they were negatively impacted by the location of the due dates and the assignment instructions, but we're seeing here 
and the 30 to 39 and the 40 to 49 have higher percentages. The quote there talks about, I think we got, I guess we're not cut off, but they're talking about balancing family and career and, and their school workload. So again, you could see that if they're struggling to find these things and they're already stressed out because they have so much on their plate, it would be a problem. Okay, next we're looking at the open-ended questions. And for these open-ended questions, we had Bart Purcell and his team over at ETS uh, do, con do a content analysis. And based on this content analysis of just the negative experiences that were reported, they grouped them into four categories. Course design, how courses and materials are structured. Instructor, instructor effectiveness and course policies. Tool slash angel, issues related to angel usage and tool slash CMS, issues related to content management system rather than, than ANGEL. Um, the two, based on the number of frequency and the number of ten intensity that had the most negative impact, were the uh, instructor category and the tool slash, slash ANGEL category. And looking at the comments, these comments about the instructors included things about getting feedback, that this, the instructors would only enter a grade and not comments. Uh, technical knowledge, they said that the, the instructors were lacking in technical knowledge even though the, the course itself required a high degree of technical knowledge. And then the interaction with the students, there was a lack of presence in the courses. Comments about ANGEL included, uh, well, we'll like to hear that, that it's outdated. And it's an outdated system, it doesn't go with their workflow, it's not flexible. Um, also, no, no organization. Uh, they said, several people pointed out that you know their angel has the tab structure across to help them with the organization. Yet, instructors fail to use this structure that's provided to them. Related to this, um, there there were a lot of comments about the over reliance of the lessons tab by the instructors. They said that the instructors just stuck, stuck everything under the lessons tab, and I think we all <laughs> have seen this. So when everything just, you know, and, and maybe not even using folders, so when everything's just under one place, it's, it's really hard to find. As far as the conclusions, um, just read through these. They, they um, based on what we read, there is a need for a consistent and obvious locations for students to find the instructions and the due dates. So, and, and like they recommended, a centralized calendar, perhaps an orientation in, course, in a course that lays out where they can find everything. A, a need for a more current, robust, and flexible learning management system, which I think all of us here are aware they're looking into that now, and that's something that we hope to have very soon. Uh, a need for instructors to make use of the feature. So once, even after we replace Angel and we get a new system, we need the instructors to, to be uh, educated in, in the different features and how to use it and how to organize it. And finally, professional development in terms of establishing a presence in a course. Um, so before we get on to any recommendations or next steps, we did just want to address a few limitations of, of this survey. Um, as I mentioned, you know, we had a pretty low response rate. It was only about 9%, so we had 387 responses that we're, we're presenting to you. Um, and we found there were discrepancies in some of the similar worded questions. Um, we got sort of conflicting answers from them. So we, we thought maybe the questions six through 13 that dealt into what caused your negative, what had a most negative impact, perhaps the wording or the options might have been misunderstood. Um, perhaps we could have used a, a different continuum or clearer definitions or, or stating the options more appropriately. It could have helped improve some of that feedback there and perhaps, perhaps clearing up the discrepancies. Um, we found a quote that kind of kept, encapsulated all that was the, um, the open-ended question um, saying, you know, although I rated the above items as negative impact, it's not a major impact. Um, it would just be nice if more things were consistent. And I started out putting no impact, but you know, you can read the rest of it. Um, so, so getting at that discrepancy of, of maybe they didn't have that strong of a feeling, maybe it was perhaps sort of a hypothetical question for them. Um, the, as I said, that it's sort of interpretation of some of those survey questions, um, it was unclear if students were refer referring mainly to the ANGEL setup or the content of the course management system or some sort of combination of the two. Um, some units make a real clear distinction between the CMS and LMS. Um, others, it's so seamless that the student may not even realize um, which one they're using. So that could have led to some of these, these responses too. 
as you can see, we really did spend a lot of time working on the survey. We reached out to experts to help us really interpret is the differing interfaces, does that affect the student's learning experience? Um, we tried to be as objective as possible with this. Um, Wendy had the slide about the conclusions. Based on those conclusions, we have made the following recommendations. Um, it's probably not a surprise that the survey results show that the most negative impact of the differing interfaces was around the syllabus, uh, due dates, uh, assignment instructions, as each of these really relates a lot of times to the student's success in the course. Uh, for example, if I miss a due date because it's not in an obvious place, I hand in an assignment late, my grade may be lowered and that's going to adversely affect my overall grade. So those things obviously can make uh, for a very anxious time for the students. So our overall recommendation is to start creating consistency with the syllabus, due dates, and how instructions for assignments are structured within the courses. We felt, based on the survey, this would be a good place to start with that consistency. Uh, because there are s many design units throughout the university, we really would like to see a cross-unit working group charged with looking at this. Um, not a committee. I know if we say another committee, we're, you get a lot of exasperation and, oh no, not another committee. So that's why we're kind of terming this a working group with the expectation that there would be some deliverables. There would be things that came out of this group that would be actually implemented in most, if not all, of the courses. Uh, we also felt it was important to have representatives from each group because that would give buy-in, everybody would have their opinions and, and their needs represented with this as well. So we thought probably the first goal from that group would be to agree a consistent placement of the syllabus so all students would know when I go to a course, this is where I will find my syllabus link, where to find your assignment due dates, and when possible, how can we make instructions standard, realizing that assignments can be very different, but looking at what are those ways where we can have the same type of information ar around assignments. So we would not be saying you must use this exact language every place, but as I said, where we can really try to make it more understandable, uh, it might be using common naming conventions, especially around navigation. I know uh, we have a lot of faculty that we start out well especially in the online course, is it a module, is it a uh, unit, is it a lesson, so even things like that where we could be more consistent uh, we think would be helpful. The other thing that we would like to see from this group is really creating best practices and getting these best practices out to the entire university. And I was at the session with the, some of the universe, university administrators, I know uh, Craig Weideman was there, Rob Pangborn, Jennifer Sparrow, and Rick Coons. And one of the questions that did come up was, you know, all these great things happen, but we don't hear about it. So that, I was kind of glad to hear that question because that's what we're advocating here, that part of this working group would be to make sure that whatever these decisions are, and as I said, in most cases, they're probably best practices, but somehow it does get disseminated out to everybody and it would be, I don't have the answer, that's why we would have this working group that would come up <laughs> with those. So the other thing with that would be to create a course orientation. I think a lot of people now, we do have course orientations. Um, I know I'm familiar with World Campus Learning Design courses and we put orientations into the, the course and we get feedback from students, well, every time I start a course, I do this same orientation. So you have to kind of be careful <laughs> because sometimes you give them what they want and, and then they don't want that. But if you were to include things that you know are unique to your course, I know some of our stats courses, they use Excel and, and some of them use an add-on to Excel. To me, that would be something that would go into an orientation where we would explain, you know, in this course, we're using this add-on to Excel, here's how to get it, you know, whether it's a download, whether you have to purchase it, here's how to install it on your computer, here's how to access it through the web. If you were doing things like that in your orientation, 
giving students a chance to practice before they actually got to the assignment. Once again, that would probably lessen the anxiety, so we would certainly be advocating for people to include orientations, not that it has to have the same information in every single course, but at least be there to help students and, and possibly with requirements so they have some idea of faculty expectations for that course as well. Um, going back to the slide that we showed you early on with the different interfaces, I just wanted to point out some of the differences so you can kind of see this is what students are experiencing, but also to say there are a lot of similarities in these interfaces as well. So if you look at the one, I'm, and I don't have a pointer, uh, but it would be the top left. The syllabus is up, it's hard to see. Kathy, can you kind of put oh, the arrow cursor? Yeah, I see it, okay. Cursor? There's where the syllabus is for this one. So you have to come, there's a bar across the top and that's where you find the syllabus. If you come to the one right underneath it, you have a, the left-hand menu, here's your syllabus link. If we move over to the right, the one at the top, you don't actually see the syllabus link. It sits in Angel. So you have the content window here. You can get to the syllabus by just, there would be another window here that would have the syllabus. Um, the one at the bottom, the syllabus is actually in two places. You have the one in the left-hand menu, and if you move up to the bar right under the picture of the Beatles, which I know has copyright permission to be up here, um, you see syllabus there as well. So everybody does have a syllabus link, but it's in a different place. We would just say, let's just standardize. Let's put that link in the same place going forward. If you also take a look at these interfaces, just to show you that there are a lot of similarities, they all have a left-hand menu. So there is navigation on the left side of the screen. The right side is really there for the content. So that could be if you have a discussion-based course, there may not be a lot there. It, it may just kind of be setting up the discussion and then you may go to whether you're using the angel discussion forums. I know some people use Yammer. Um, if you have videos, they would be accessed in that right-hand frame. If it's more of a lecture-based course, you might see a lot of text there. Um, if you have a lot of images, they're, they're all going to come there. So you can still be very creative and do what Ever you want as you're teaching your course in, in that right hand frame. So as I said, there's, there's kind of a consistent layout that we already have in a lot of our, our courses. So going to the next slide, we really feel that we have a great opportunity to make our courses more consistent and really starting right now, as we said, around the, the syllabus, due dates and assignments, um, we have this opportunity because we know we are going to a new learning management system. That, that, that's a given. Um, ANGEL is certainly at the end of its life. The graphic that you see here is from a screenshot of a course that's actually being piloted in Canvas right now. Um, I, in orange, we have the syllabus highlighted. This is the syllabus link in Canvas. If we all agreed when we go to Canvas, we will use that syllabus link then all of our students would know, here's where I click to find the syllabus. Um, it may be a Word doc behind it, it may be an HTML file, it may be a PDF behind that, but just saying we would all use that link. That, that could be, I'm not saying that's what the solution is, but it could be. Uh, I think part of what we deal with right now is because we do have these different interfaces in, and for some of us who've been doing it for a long time, it's the old, well this is how we've always done it. Once we move to a new system, we won't have that. We can't say, well, this is how we've always done it because it will be new to all of us. So we really do see this as an opportunity to make some of these changes. Um, we've talked about a calendar. The students mentioned wanting a calendar. Those of you who have courses in Angel, if you've tried to use the calendar, it is not the most user friendly. It's very hard to update from semester to semester. I know we, we tried using it in several courses early on and it was not efficient. The, the amount of time that went into it, it just really, with the number of courses that a lot of our units offer, it, it just wasn't efficient. We got away from that. Um, I have heard, I have not used the calendar. Um, it, it's uh, highlighted here on the right side of, of that screen. I've heard that it is much better than Angel's 
So that might be an option. And we put all of the due dates in the course. They all appear in the calendar. I know that if you're in multiple courses, all of your due dates can show in your calendar, that Canvas can bring all those together. So as I said, I think we have some opportunity here to really work to make some of these things happen. Um, the last thing that we have really for a recommendation is that we probably do need support from upper level administration. Uh, that's another thing, a question that came up at the session I attended right before lunch where I said we did have upper administrators there, uh, you know, what can be done to kind of make these things happen. We, we really do feel we need their support. I, I think it is there. I don't think that it, it's not. But just being able to, if we have this working group and they come up with, here are my recommendations, just having a, another group that they can kind of go to and they can say, well, yes, you know, we bless this and then, you know, we're really going to um, strongly suggest that people within our units adhere to this. So that is it for our survey and kind of our information that we wanted to share with you. Uh, we have a lot of time left, so we'd love to hear questions from you. I'm going to start right here. Um, I two questions. And, and first of all, I, the survey is fantastic. And so is that available? Can we, is there access to that survey? Or is it being published somewhere where we can utilize that? Um, I could give you an executive summary that will give you, it wouldn't give you things like the open-ended responses, but it could give you some, some of that information. No, I think this is really wonderful sure. for those of us that are trying to sort of work in this area. Um, and so I, I'm curious though from your findings, one of the things that you emphasize as an outcome is consistency. And yet I didn't see that as what my interpretation is what the, the participants were looking for, but they were looking for being able to find the syllabus or being able to find the due dates. Not necessarily that it all needed to be the same. Um, and I guess from my perspective in teaching, I, I like to have flexibility. I want to know that the syllabus is really important or that the due dates are really important and therefore I will do everything I can to emphasize that in my class as opposed to everybody has to do it exactly the same way because I bet there's a lot of very good ways of doing it as opposed to one best way of doing it. Um, and so that's one thought. And the other one is a difficult question, which is, I find for my classes, I know how important the syllabus is, I put a lot of importance in the syllabus, and the students are saying they have a hard time finding it. I wonder how much the students are using the syllabus. I think for a lot of online courses, at least I'm more familiar with the graduate portfolio. Mm -hmm. I think they're using it a lot because we do get a lot of feedback about the syllabus. Um, we do make it very prominent within the courses. Another part of it is the schedule. Um, I, at least for learning design, we have the schedule almost as a separate piece, so if you want to print that out. But as I said, from the, the graduate <coughs> level courses, I think it is very important to the students. I know if you look at syllabi that we create, they are very, very detailed. Because we said, we know in a face-to-face -face classroom, you know, this may be your syllabus, a sheet of paper, I don't understand something, I raise my hand or, you know, I, I come take it home, read it, and I, I don't know that this happens a lot, but, you know, I, I have the opportunity to ask you. Online doesn't quite work that way because if, if I'm stuck on something and I don't understand, and this is also around assignment instructions, I don't know what to do. I may email the instructor. If you're not on, and, and most of our courses we ask you to check in at least once every 24 hours. If you've just, if it's nine o'clock in the morning and you just checked and you're not going to check till tomorrow, I start an assignment at 10 a.m. and I have a question about it, I email you, I don't hear back, I may have lost that whole day. And at least from, and, and I realize, and other people can certainly chime in because as I said, I'm, I'm most familiar with World Campus courses which are totally online and our audience, they're students at a distance, they're working adults. As a working adult, my time to get that assignment done may have been 10 o'clock that morning. So we try to put as much detail into those things so that we hope you, you can figure it out. You know, you, you will have questions, you will be emailing your instructor, but, but we try to really, um, as I said, put a lot more into, if you see one of our syllabi, I'm sure a lot more than you would in a face-to-face -face classroom. If, if I could just address the comment you made about um, wanting flexibility, I think yeah. that's the challenge here. Mm -hmm. There's a tension 
between, you know, what, what do we really think we want to try to keep consistent, you know, and what do we, we want to be able to let faculty and designers do what makes the most sense for that course and that program and that college. So that's going to be the challenge is trying to figure out where, you know, where to draw that line and, to, and see where that's going to work. Kathy, I'd like to follow that up because I'm in agreement with you that flexibility, I think, is really important. I think how an approach to that may be that we have to come to agreement on what is a syllabus, not so much where does the syllabus go. Um, students, learners of all ages are faced with an interface change to Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, their bank, Google, whatever, on a weekly basis, and they figure it out. I mean, that's our world now that we live in. But if we all had an agreement on what is a syllabus, some faculty, a syllabus is the contract and the policies. You miss this many classes, or here's my late policy. Others, it's very detailed, and here's the schedule, where somebody else will put the schedule separately. Right. And so if we don't have agreements on kind of the what is this thing, where it is doesn't really matter. Um, and I think the learners are, are getting more and more used to defining it because like your studies even shown that they aren't so upset about that. It's what is the information and, and how can I get these really important bits of information. Right. So getting some agreement on what some things are might actually get us down the road a lot quicker than an interface design. Janet? Um, I think it's a great study. I applaud your efforts with this. I wonder if after you establish a working group, which I think is another fabulous idea, you would consider repeating this study and uh, do potentially a longitudinal look at this over, you know, 10 years or something to see, eight years, to see what kind of progress has been made. And um, Jane mentioned that there were some concerns about a, a couple of the questions. When you do a longitudinal um, study, it's ideal to keep things as is, but even if you massage the questions a little bit, and then in two years test to see if your working group may have had an impact because there's less negativity, uh, that less negative impact by some of these um, attributes. In the yeah, we had actually said we, pro we would like to do that okay. because, you know, we make changes, we assume it's going to be for the better because this is what students have asked for, but that's not always the yeah. case. So yes, we, we definitely want to keep keep it getting better. Um, Clarabelle, I think you were next. <coughs> it's just interesting because you know I'm not an instructional designer, but I'm looking at it from the standpoint of if I were a user. Um, just some of the things I'm hearing from everyone, it sounds like there's a difference between what the function or the role of the LMS is versus the CMS, um, but to the user, it might all look like one. Um, so some of the things that I'm hearing about flexibility versus the things that need to be consistent, uh, it just sounds like if, if I were the user and I'm going into this for the first time, I need to, number one, understand the nomenclature so I know where to find the thing that I'm looking for, whether right. it's the syllabus, whether it's the lesson or whatever um, that's being asked. Um, and then once I know where to look for it, it should be easy and intuitive to find. So to me, those are the things that maybe could be consistent and could be user tested, just like we do for website design and navigation. So trying to locate the content um, shouldn't be hard. That should be intuitive and it, to some degree maybe is consistent. And then also the content side is where maybe there's room for flexibility just because how you display the lesson and all that will probably be different from course to course. So it's just really interesting how, you know, you get the insights from the survey and if this working group kind of gets established, how do you start to decipher those LMS related things and those content management related things so that the whole user experience is, you know, ideal for any of the end users that are going to be looking at it. Yeah, I think it would be great to be able to do user testing on these things too, because we all, you know, it makes perfect sense to us where we put something because that's where we put it, you know. But when you actually watch someone else try to find it, it's always very, you know, illustrative of wow, that that doesn't make sense to them, but it, you know, it made perfect sense to me. So, absolutely. 
Yeah, just putting these two comments together, I think it's interesting what you just said is it makes sense to all of us, but not to people who are giving an online course for the first time. And so that might be another group of people. I mean, it's not just the students who are using it, but the professors who are implementing a new course. Like, once they do it a couple times, sure, they always put the syllabus in the same place and everything, but that first or even second time, the nomenclature isn't familiar to them either, and so they decide, okay, to me a lesson means this, and so going forward I'm just going to make it like that, and then that confusion may translate into the students because they are not on the same page also. Mm -hmm. And so I just think it's interesting how it's an interaction, I think, between them. I'll go out on a limb and say that even in our unit, there are differences in what the faculty preferences are mm -hmm. of where they want certain things and there's not necessarily always consistency there so I appreciate the challenge that you're bringing to us because if we're, uh, if we're having trouble in our own small units then to try to get this off the ground university-wide that's a big challenge yeah, and I think that's why we said we were really looking and really just from those results at, at the syllabus is there place we can all kind of agree, this will be the link for the syllabus. Um, if, if we all agree, or, or as we said, it's probably going to be the majority, that we're going to try to use the calendar and really think about, do you want an orientation and how do we write instructions around assignments? You know, just kind of starting there and everything else, you know, will still be, because we understand the flexibility. And, as designers, we don't want to create that same course over and over. And faculty don't, you know, you don't teach probably the same course in your face-to-face -face classroom, you know, and, and we, we understand that. So we thought this would be a place to start. And as Janet said, if we make a few changes and then we go back in a couple years and, and do the survey again, has that made a difference with our students? I think we have a question over here. Yeah, I'm an instructor at the World Campus, and I have students that are 20, and our students that are 70. So based on this survey, were you able to extrapolate any findings or observations around age? We did. We had one slide. Mm -hmm. Can you talk? <laughs> 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 Lynn is not feeling well today, in case you haven't heard. She's having a little hard time talking. You saw, you saw that higher percentage is between the 30s and 39 age range, and then the 40 to 49 age range. Did they? they they rated both of those things, location of assignments and location of due dates, as having a, a negative impact on their learning experience. Um, I, thought, I thought we saw overall the 30 to 39 most, I'm trying to Most negative that. of Looks all. Like, yeah, yeah over, overall was the 30 to 39. I thought we saw something. I think so. I, mean, I think that rings a bell. So many reports, they, the World Campus <laughs> really gives a lot of information. Yeah, it was 30 to 39. Yeah, 30 to 39. And, you know, and if you think about it, maybe that's the time when people are starting careers or families, you know, are in the midst of um, doing a lot of things and, and, and have full schedules. That would be my guess. I mean, there's, we don't have any proof of that, but if you want to make a conclusion, you know, yeah, 30s are pretty active into the 40s with the children. Will it ever be possible for I using to put these two items where I want them to go? I'm thinking about the old days where I printed off a paper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and I put it in the front of my notebook and I put my calendar over here and then my person next to me probably stuck it in their book or something different. I just thought, rather than us making the decision, wouldn't it be lovely if we could find it, you know, by search or whatever, click, click, and put it wherever I like to keep my syllabus in my calendar. As the user, you mean? As the user. Okay, that's really good. User. Interesting. Just be able to create my own. Maybe the left hand side is me. Mm -hmm. I how, or I favored it or whatever. Like mm -hmm. those whatever. Pages, those home pages that you just like. Yeah, I mean, I know that's maybe that's, well, it's really not that far ahead. No. But you, mm -hmm. you can do it now. I just wonder if that's something right. that you could consider at some point to create places where I can build my own. I think mm -hmm. the comment, I, I comment person came to that. Like, I need an LMS that fits my workflow. And they were talking about the rigidity of the angel. And, how they can't use it on their mobile device, how they can't sync it with their calendar on their mobile device. So I think these things are starting to, to yeah. come up and they're thinking the same way you are. Yeah. Is like, why can't I just every course add it to my calendar? And then I have it on my phone and I, and, you know, when I need, you know, when I'm sitting there at work and I, what, what do I have to do tonight? I just look at my calendar and all my yeah. course courses are there. Yeah, we're doing nice things so just a little bit different, yeah. mm -hmm. whether it's in folders or by categories or by favorites, whatever it might be. So it'd be great to, to think, past even what we're doing right now.
and um, ideally think of it from the user's vantage um, point. Another question? Um, I was just thinking again along these lines, you know, one as as far as other outcomes of this, um, one as far as two faculty emphasizing, you know, making a handout, doing something that says, look, this is the most important thing for you to do for your online class. You, for those that are new, I mean, emphasizing it right up front. So, so you want to do an online class? Great. The most important thing. Well, I mean, it's not that, you know, there's a lot of important things, but you know, if you're gonna, if there's anything you're gonna, low-hanging fruit. These are some places where you can really have an impact right up front. And then the other thing is, if you have an online class as a part of that course evaluation, which all of these courses are being evaluated, if it's an online class, specifically put questions related to the findings from the survey as far as, you know, was this easy to find? Was this, you know, asking that and scoring it somehow so that then the faculty know, you know across the board all the online classes, whether it was or not. So I might say, oh yeah, it's easy to find in my class. And you say, no, nope, it actually wasn't there because if you look at your course evaluations, the students say it's not. And, and these I love these recommendations because how many years have we had paper syllabi and faculty don't make the same paper syllabi, but they got better as soon as we said you have to have a students with disabilities policy, you have to have a due date, and so they're not the same, but they're much more can, hopefully <laughs> consistent. But you know. I would urge that we move all of these recommendations out of just online. That I mean, yeah. every student on this campus is going to use whatever LMS is picked. And every faculty is going to use whichever LMS is picked. We should be looking at the 100,000 students, not the eventually 45,000 or more campus. I mean, this is, it, this is a good instruction issue, not a online instruction issue. And I think we have a, a wealth of opportunity to gather great data and, and really make instruction better across the board and understand how we harness these tools to help instruction. Janet? I wonder, Jane, I know we did some, you, you did some analysis, some correlation work, um, but I wonder if you look for a correlation between the amount of time, that very first slide, the amount of time spent looking for, navigating through, and um, how students responded negatively. So is it the students who are um, responding with at least 50, 15 minutes and above, um, responding most negatively, with most negative impact. I don't have that at my fingertips, but um, I don't know if you guys emphasized that in the paper at all. Um, that's something that jumped out. Um, we, we may have that. I'd like to see how do, this slide relates to your other findings. I was sort of surprised by the 15 minute yeah. point because I mm -hmm. feel like it should be two minutes, three minutes. I, I think 15 minutes is too long. Oh, I gotcha. So I, I gotcha. Like our, our standards should be even, you know, at time. Yeah, yeah, the fact yeah that I look, you look more granular. Know, it could be a matter of how important is that to me, too. Maybe even if that's not important to people. Is, it re is 15 minutes reasonable? Like, what that question is, you know? Right. If it only took you 10 minutes, yeah. is that a reasonable amount of time? I, I might have missed it in the methodology, but were all students, all the 300 and some, exposed to multiple designs from multiple learning design houses? Not necessarily. They were just taking two or more online courses with various other caveats. But um, because we surveyed so many, um, I think a lot of them were probably taking multiple courses and had, and they could have taken courses before that summer too. They weren't necessarily brand new either. Just an observation, I'm concerned about the student that took greater than 120 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would have thrown the computer out the window. <laughs> We're worried about that one. <laughs> I think one of the other points that has kind of come up to me over the course of today is, um, you know, we're all very anxious to get started with the new LMS and, and figure out what we're actually using for sure and when this is going to roll out. But I do think it's important that before we start hurrying to put a whole lot of courses in the new LMS that we're given some time to figure out how it works, number one, and for, to, to talk to each other and figure out what these things are that we might be able to, to standardize so that 
we don't have to do this over and over again, that we can kind of, when we put them into, a, when we move them over from Angel, that they're starting to look more consistent in the, in the ways that we feel is important for that to happen. Um, and that can't happen overnight. You know, we, it's gonna take us all a little while to figure out what this new system's like and how it works, so. I don't know what those dates are, but it would just be great to have a little bit of time to, to play with this and figure it out first. Well, according to that clock, it is 2.30, so that's the end of our time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.